my Juicy Co-Creators, Lilu here on the beautiful island of Kauai at Common Grounds today with uh, Michael Murphy. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Good. Very excited. You're on the island. We're at the island at the same time and there's many synchronicities that brought us together. Your your movie is playing here uh, on the island that is called... It's called What in the World Are They Sprain? Uh-huh. So we're going to talk about chemtrails. This is, this is a big topic right now all around the world. How many languages is your movie translated? into? I believe it's been translated into about nine or ten. Uh, it's been seen by millions and really created a worldwide movement to address this issue uh, called chemtrails, but scientifically it's called geoengineering. Uh -huh. So what, why are you so passionate about this topic? Why, why did you decide to do a movie? Have you always felt fascinated and what, where, where does this come from? Not, not really. Uh, it was something I only became aware of just a couple years ago and um, geoengineering is defined as the artificial modification of the Earth's climate. So there's a group of scientists, corporations and governments who want to alter our natural systems uh, for many different reasons. Uh, geoengineers are proposing spraying 10 to 20 million tons of toxic aluminum into our skies uh, for what they say is the stated goal of uh, cooling the planet. However, uh, upon research, it looks like there are many different reasons, uh, all of which are not in the best interest of people like you and I, but they consolidate power into the hands of uh, corporations and international bankers uh, who, who want this godlike power. And these programs uh, allow them uh, to do that. However, they're very toxic, not only to human health, but also to ecosystems. And we covered that in the film. I love how we were saying that there's just a plane uh, above <laughs> our heads. How do we know that they're chemtrails versus regular trails? What tell us? Incredible question. Great question. Always comes up. Uh, a contrail is short for condensation trail. It's natural and normal uh, and has been occurring since airplanes have been flying. So when an yep. airplane flies at a certain elevation, uh, a condensation trail will occur from the heat from the engine. Um, it's very similar to the principle when we're in cold weather and when we breathe. You can see your breath, but it quickly dissipates. Contrails usually dissipate in about four to five seconds. However, what we're seeing now uh, on a worldwide basis are these trails that linger. They do not dissipate. They actually fall out and spread out and create an artificial cloud, exactly what geoengineers propose that they want to do, however, deny that they're doing it. Uh, within the film, though, how do we know that they are uh, these chemtrails or stratospheric aerosol geoengineering uh, trails. We uh, went around the world and spoke with scientists, uh, even geoengineers, talking about their plans and proposals uh, about the measurable fallout. And around the world, uh, in many places, we're seeing toxicity of aluminum, barium, and strontium. And again, these uh, match geoengineers' plans uh, exactly. And uh, in certain cases, we have seen such an increase, uh, up to 50,000 percentage points uh, of toxic aluminum in just seven years. Um, so that toxicity was not there before the trails uh, were present. And, and again, it's exactly what geoengineers are proposing they want to do. We're finding the metals everywhere. Nobody has been able to source the metals uh, anywhere else. And, and uh, I think it's important to address uh, aluminum oxide and and why is aluminum oxide toxic uh, is uh, when you see the film you'll uh, see we went to a geoengineering conference and spoke to the geoengineers and actually recorded them but uh, about seven years ago a group of scientists um, started questioning in Northern California why their forest was collapsing and why people were having difficulty growing natural organic foods so they started doing pH tests of the soil and what they found was really shocking the, uh, the pH of the soil was changing from their normal acidic soil to an alkaline soil. And we're not talking about just uh, a couple of times the normal alkalinity. We're talking uh, anywhere on the average of 10 times to 12 times the normal alkalinity. So basic science tells us that plant life that requires an acidic soil will start to uh, die when the pH changes. Ironically enough, uh, aluminum oxide will change the pH of soils when it falls. So they began doing additional tests uh, to measure what uh, what was affecting these changes and again found massive amounts of aluminum barium and strontium uh, which is considered to be the geoengineering footprint because again that matches what geoengineers express uh, what they urgently want to do however deny that they're doing it so uh, it's deeply concerning the forest collapse is happening at such an alarming rate and there are many other consequences as a result of geoengineering programs geoengineers are very clear uh, about some of these quote-unquote risks 
that these programs uh, will do, including weird weather patterns, which we clearly have seen, droughts in Africa and Asia. We've clearly seen uh, ozone depletion, which we've clearly seen. So the uh, just from an environmental standpoint, uh, these programs are very uh, damaging, and we're seeing the results. Mm-hmm. Uh, around the world from these programs, human health implications are even more startling. Mm. So, Jazz? Well, if, if we look at aluminum-related illnesses in the past year, they've been going through the roof, one of which is Alzheimer's, mm-hmm. uh, which has been uh, going through the roof around the world. Uh, in Riverside County, close to where I live, we've seen uh, Alzheimer's go up over 260 percent in just 10 years. Um, so that's startling. Respiratory mortality, after they spray these particulates, into the sky, they do fall down into the air that we breathe. Mm -hmm. Um, So it does enter into our system. Uh, So I spoke about respiratory mortality. It's gone from number eight on the list of mortality down to number three in just the past six years. Um, Yes, so it's increased. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it went from number eight on the list, now it's number three. Mm. Um, And uh, uh, so aluminum is very toxic. We've interviewed many physicians about this. Barium, uh, which again is being found in very high levels, not only in our our rain and snow samples, but people have been getting tested, uh, blood tests and hair follicle tests, which have revealed very high levels of aluminum and barium. Barium is very toxic. Um, We've spoken to a number of emergency room physicians during heavy spray days when they, when you see the trails and, and eventually it blocks out the sun, I've been told that emergency rooms get packed with people that have burning eyes, uh, irritability, headaches, nausea, but then uh, barium not only lowers our immune system, uh, it also creates high blood pressure. So during heavy spray days, there's a greater frequency of heart attacks and strokes. Mm. What is, so let's say, what what is the cover up from, uh, from, from politicians and from the government about this? How do you justify, why, why, why are they spraying some things? For global warming reason you're saying? And, and this well, is their, their cover up? Well, I'm not saying for, for global warming, but geoengineers are proposing these programs stating that they want to put this reflective material, which is uh, primarily aluminum, to reflect the sun and uh, save us from the supposed threat of global warming. However, NASA studies show that putting aerosols into our sky will actually warm the planet. Yeah. We've seen nighttime highs increase since yeah. they've started uh, started these programs. And typically on a heavy spray day, we will see cooler temperatures during the day, but warmer temperatures in the night. So we believe that's a cover story. Um, if you look into weather control and weather modification, uh, it's important to note uh, the involvement with the HARP system, High Active Auroral Frequency Project, I think I said it correctly, which uh, requires a plasma sky. Um, here in Hawaii, I've been interviewing farmers, many of which have seen great declines in, in their ability to grow natural organic foods, but they've also, which we'll get to in a minute, but they've also seen a great increase in the frequency of lightning. Why is that? Well, aluminum, while it's not a great conductor like in wire, it's a very effective conductor into the sky. And again, the harp requires a plasma sky. Aluminum sprayed into our sky would create that plasma sky. And geoengineers talk about their ability to uh, heat up over 400 square miles of our sky. Why would they want to do that? Well, if you heat up our atmosphere, you can actually create high pressure systems and low pressure systems and steer the storm. So we know that barium is a desiccant. So if barium is seeded on top of clouds and other material that they're seeding on the clouds, you can actually move moisture and then steer, t- steer storms. We cover in the film uh, a document called Owning the Weather by 2025. That's an expressed interest of our military. So what they're doing, I think many of your your viewers probably know about the GMO seed issue, mm-hmm. which you've probably covered, especially... Monsanto. Yes, Mon- Monsanto. Not too many of our... They're not our friends, are they? <laughs> you but, tell me, are they your friends? <laughs> uh, no, they don't like me too much because there's a link to geoengineering. But uh, uh, getting into to what's happening uh, with the weather, it's very similar to what's happening with the GMO seed market. What we have are corporations uh, with the seeds who have genetically modified the seeds. Why? 
um, so that they can gain money and power off of it. And if they completely control our food supply, uh, people will not be able to grow food naturally like we see uh, on the trees around here. People can eat and be free from the system. Corporations do not benefit. They don't yeah. uh, gain power from that. Same concept with weather control. If you control the weather, you can control everything, not only food supplies, but political systems. So that's what we see happening, a corporatization of our natural systems. We have corporations who are usurping the authority of things that were under dominion of our creator. They're taking that so that man can have godlike power. Yeah, yeah. It's really if if when I hear you, it's like men they're they're thinking they're gods and and changing all the natural resources and tendencies and everything that that's supposed to happen very naturally and organically into a powerhouse and a lot of greediness and all this and that's why the system is collapsing, and the information is leaking. It, well, you're absolutely correct. That's what's happening. Um, they're desperately going for this godlike power, but uh, people like you uh, addressing issues like this, and many people here on Hawaii who have stood up to address this issue were working uh, with the city county council. You had mentioned politicians, and I think it's important uh, to address. There have been numerous congressional hearings on the issue of geoengineering. Uh, while they're discussing it, they're not admitting that it's going on. And I spoke with uh, Senator Karen Johnson, who's in my film, uh, who is very open. She is now retired, but she was open why she didn't address it uh, when she was in office. And for a politician to address something, we have to realize right now, uh, these are crimes against nature and humanity. Uh, they're not only destroying human health, but ecosystems everywhere. And uh, for a politician to address it, it's, it's taboo. Dennis Kucinich did address uh, the issue of chemtrails in his 2001 Space Preservation Act, where he actually called for a banning of chemtrails. Uh, before the bill went to the floor, that area, uh, the area about chemtrails had been removed, and there appears to have been a, a lot of coercion. So, uh, but we do have politicians who are addressing it. We went to Washington, D.C. in my film, many of which ran when they heard the issue of geoengineering. They were very friendly until we brought that up, and then they, they literally ran, and that was a, a part of the film that impacted many people. However, uh, it is being addressed now by politicians. We actually are working with the county uh, of Maui, with the county council, on uh, what's called the Clean Sky Ordinance, and that's an ordinance that will ban uh, geoengineering programs on and around the county of Maui. So uh, we do have a sponsor. Um, with it and political sp support. Uh, we've had also members uh, who, of the government in Maui who have performed rain tests, and which has shown contamination of aluminum, barium, and strontium. And again, that appears to be the chemtrail geoengineering footprint, the fallout from these programs. Tell us about the coconuts in uh, Maui. I heard they were not really exactly the same coconuts that they used to be. You, you heard about the coconut. Well, one, one famous uh, clip from the movie, uh, we walked through a coconut forest, and uh, uh, one of the gentlemen used to work with coconut trees. And when, when the aluminum, this other particulate, falls into the ground, it does get into the root systems. But typically, plants have uh, protection. Um, from, from these toxins so they will shut down the root systems and not get the nutrients. Uh, what we notice is that bark, tree bark, is actually peeling off of the coconut trees, something that they haven't seen there for a while. Um, I also uh, in, uh, just returned to Maui back in April and I interviewed several farmers and everyone that I interviewed said that they've been seeing between 20 to 50 percent decline in their ability to grow natural organic crops. Not every crop, but just in, in certain crops. So I put together uh, a short film uh, about that, which can be seen on my website, truthmediaproductions.us. So that's available on YouTube. Mm. And, and what would be the other reason for that? If there would be other reasons for, for these, uh, the, 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 the trees and the growth and the crops and the, all of that, what, what could it be? Something else than, than those chemtrails? Right. Well, um, it could be many different things, but we're seeing this on a worldwide basis. And uh, the contamination is there. Deborah Whitman of Environmental Voices has actually taken tests of the tree bark, and she's found uh, these toxins 
in, in the trees. So they are soaking it up. They are being affected by it. So it mm-hmm. appears that this is conclusively what's happening. We do know that the pH is changing. We do know that's devastating to uh, to the environment. And it's, it's, you know, it's so hard to believe that somebody could do something with such devastation. But I think it's important to note uh, what's commonly re- referred to as the Galian dialectic, problem, reaction, solution. Mm-hmm. We know that our soils are being toxified with aluminum. We know that people are having trouble growing now natural organic foods. Uh, this is going to shock you. There is a new aluminum resistant GMO seed. Mm. Uh, it's owned by the USDA and the department and the Brazilian government. So uh, they uh, seem to have a solution for this problem that's been created. How far would you go in the conspiracy theory then? How far do you put this? How big is that for you? How devastating for humanity is it? I wouldn't call it a theory. Um, It is a conspiracy without a doubt and there definitely is a well-funded science called geoengineering. Uh, Bill Gates is even publicly uh, on the record for funding these programs. So in terms of theory, I would call it a conspiracy fact. Um, How devastating is it? I believe that there's no greater threat to the planet, human health, and our ecology other than nuclear fallout than these programs. Mm. And it's up to those of us who love nature, who love natural systems, to fight for this and we have to realize just like our our food supply we have to stand up and say no Mm -hmm. we want our ability to grow normal natural food bottom line is this each and every one of us has a right to breathe fresh air and whether you like it or not it is a fact that geoengineers are planning on putting these toxins into our sky there's no question about that what is there for us to do on an individual basis on everyday life people what can we do? Yeah, I think that's a great question. There's so much that we can do. And, and bottom line is this, this issue affects each and every one of us. And geoengineers want to completely cover our skies so that our sun is completely blocked out. So A, I think because uh, although the film has woken up millions of people, we still have millions more that need to be awakened. So I think doing what you're doing, talking about this, getting the word out is very important. Uh, my film, What in the World Are They Spraying, has been very instrumental in, uh, in waking millions up around the world so I think it's important that we we get uh, a copy of the film and I've lifted the copyright on the film so uh, once you purchase it we encourage you to make as many copies as possible become an activist get the word out Um, if you already know about this and if that is not your forte there's many different things that you can do we uh, have attorneys now who are starting to file lawsuits and uh, uh, again awareness political action and uh, I think whatever I ask people to look into their heart and see what their gifts are and address this in some capacity and I think that's really important. There's some petitions uh, going around too? There are many petitions going around and I think that's one of the thousands of different things that we can do. Bottom line is we do need to become active, we do need to get out into the public, create an awareness, but then uh, also meet with our local uh, politicians and I think uh, just like in Maui and here on Kauai we're, we're starting the Kauai Clean Sky Ordinance as well and we're hoping to use Hawaii as a model. So I think it's important to go bring the information, not the conspiratorial, because there's a lot of uh, deceptive propaganda and misinformation out there, but it's important that you know you go in with the term geoengineering and go in with true facts. And we do have contamination. Uh, we do have geoengineers on the public record talking about their, uh, their plans and proposals to do this, um, but the can't, contamination cannot be refuted. It is there, and it unfortunately is devastating our environment. What are some of those uh, wrong facts that are going around that are a little bit too far out or not true, or you know, it's like you have to put a bit of because there is everything and everything on the internet, and so Absolutely. let's 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 frame it a little bit. I think that that's an important issue to address because anytime uh, you come out with an issue that's trying to be hidden, there's what's called controlled opposition. So there will be whether they're they're funded by agencies or corporations, we don't know, but but there's all kinds of uh, theories. Uh, out there uh, that I w- don't even want to want to say um, that really just seem beyond what what might be reality. So I think it's important right now to look at the issue of geoengineering, you know, and uh, and address it in in that capacity. And we do know, you know, again the contamination is there. Uh, it matches what geoengineers. Uh, expressly describe that they want to do. What we see in the sky matches their plans. 
And uh, the fallout, again, of aluminum, barium, and strontium matches numerous geoengineering patents. Uh, we looked for sources of that contamination, mm -hmm. uh, haven't been able to find it. Commonly, people thought that it was coming from China. Uh, California Air Quality Resources Board uh, did a study on aerosols from China. Uh, those metals were not amongst that. So it's interesting. We've seen uh, aluminum increases uh, as high as 50,000 percent just in a couple of years. So. Uh, we definitely have the contamination, toxicity, and uh, whether you like it or not, geoengineers are planning on doing this and planning on dumping more aluminum into our atmosphere. And we need to stand up and say, no, we want things back in their natural state. Would you call it a ge genocide? Um, many people believe, uh, and I have a couple of theories on that. Now, I don't believe that uh, we do know that there's a depopulation agenda. Um, and if anybody questions that, I ask you to look into uh, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, um, and many other of these people that call themselves the elite. I call them the criminal elite. And even Bill Gates, who has publicly spoken about his desire to uh, participate in population reduction. Interestingly enough, Bill Gates is a funder, as I said earlier, into geoengineering. And uh, many people are unaware of this, but he worked, his father worked very closely uh, with a woman named Margaret Sanger, who established. Uh, a nonprofit called Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood was put into the inner city uh, African American communities for what she said was the stated goal of reducing the Negro population. And I quote what she said. So we're talking about people that believe that uh, it's their job, unfortunately, to reduce the population and, and they have little value for human life. And uh, we are going in, unfortunately, to, to this agenda. So those of us who love life, who value natural systems and value natural foods, I believe it's incumbent upon us to address this, not in a fearful way, but in a way that's productive and uh, in a way that, that can create an environment where we are not subject to, to these crimes. Mm. But without a doubt, there is a depopulation agenda. I'm aware of that. Mm. So what, what, how could we end this on a positive note and on an empowering note? Because the intention here, or your intention is not to, to, to leave us with fear. This is not about that. That's absolutely correct. Well, what I can say, uh, in the past year since we released the film, mi millions of people have woken up. And there is a worldwide movement that's now forming for the first time in my life. I look at my fellow human beings and, and I feel a sense of hope because this movement has grown so quickly. And uh, we just use Maui and Kauai as an example and the people who are getting behind speaking to their governments. And now government officials are starting to stand up and recognize this. And we've come a real long way. So we need to continue. And uh, bottom line is this, the earth cannot sustain these programs for much longer. I've spoken to many scientists. They don't know how long, but they say it is not sustainable. So my greatest hope is not only in what I've seen in the past year, but this movement continues to grow and many people notice the crisscrossing streaks that, that are above them. And once you're aware of it and you see that, it's very hard to ignore. So on a positive note, I've never seen a movement grow so quickly and I've never had such great hope in my fellow human beings. Mm. All right, let's take action. <laughs> Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and your passion and being active out there and making it happen and living this juicy life. You got it. It's a pleasure to be on. Thank you for, uh, for covering this. And uh, please watch the film. I'm sure that you'll be enlightened and then you'll join us in, in, our, uh, in our very peaceful, nonviolent way to uh, address these crimes and uh, get them stopped because we will. Yeah. I can see that. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, my beautiful co-creators. Aloha from beautiful Kauai at Common Ground. Bye.